Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, before I continue, the reason why I'm making this presentation is because I recently had a client who acquired the IM608 and he's from the US. I have clients UK all over, but in the US I tell people to start off with the American vehicle because they're quite um, easy to understand and easy to do. So he was doing that getting his confidence built up and then one day he had an opportunity to add a key on a VW. So long story short, he ended up, um, let's say, deleting the original key. So he's freaking out and his client is there and they're freaking out. So I was able to assist him with it and I was just thinking like, you know what? What he did, if he had a little bit of understanding, he could have avoided that situation. And VW is, it's quite complex. So. I'm making this video for anybody who is A, new to the VW systems, or B, just wants to know what the tool can do. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this presentation and uh, we'll get it started. So today I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to add a key with the IM608 Pro on a 2013 VW Jetta. And for those of you who don't know, welcome to the channel. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an Autel Diagnostic Consultant. And what I basically do is all the tools that I sell, I come with the tool. I'm more focused on the support and getting you results so you don't get into situations like that. So go ahead and take this website down and feel free to make a consultation with me. Now, before we proceed, I just want to share with you what you're going to be learning. First, we're gonna talk about the tools and proper setup that you're gonna to need to know before you even get started with this procedure. And then I'm gonna cover some of the commonly used terms you're gonna encounter while working with the VWs. Also, we're going to identify the different VAG emo generations. There's several of them that I'm gonna introduce you to. And fourth, we're gonna be identifying the different VAG immobilizer systems. Fifth, we're gonna talk about how to add a key on a 2013 Jetta step by step. Now, this is what we're gonna need. The IM608 tablet, your XP100, XP400 Pro serial programmer, your existing key, and also a new blade key, or you can call it a flip key. All right, now, how to connect to the vehicle. You're gonna get your IM608 and we're gonna plug it in directly via USB cable, okay? Then, normally, we'll connect the VCI via Bluetooth, but in this case, we're gonna be connecting this also with the USB cable and then directly to the OBD port of the car. Now, I wanna explain why I'm recommending it via USB cable. Sometimes, depending on the vehicle you're working on, the Bluetooth connectivity can, let's say, interrupt the key uh, relearning operation. So to avoid that, any frequencies doing that, just give it a direct connection. And to tell you the truth, it actually will run through its um, sequence a little bit faster than Bluetooth because it's to direct connect. Okay? so. Um, get some paper and a pen and I want you to write these down Okay, cuz it's if I knew this it would have saved me a lot of time as well Dealer key you're gonna see this all the time Logically when you think of dealer key, we think that we have to order it from the dealer. That's not the case. Okay um, A dealer key is just a key that must be pre-configured to a specific VIN before it can be learned to the vehicle Okay, so even if you have a key that has the proper, you know, transponder in it, if it's not pre-configured, it won't uh, learn to the vehicle, okay? So every time you see dealer key, just think pre-configured, pre-configured, like throw the dealer key out, think pre-configured. It needs to be pre-configured in order to uh, learn the key to the system. Next is learn key. Now when you select this operation, all keys will be cleared, then learn via the ignition switch. Okay, all the keys will be cleared, then learn via the ignition switch. Third is add key. 
there's going to be an event where the Autel is going to tell you to get the serial programmer and then it's going to ask you to put the key in there. Okay, so it will add the key through the serial programmer, um, which is the XP400 Pro. Okay, and then there's service mode. So service mode, in order to gain access and read information in the vehicle, the vehicle needs to get into a service mode state. And this is where the dash will turn off even though the ignition's on. Okay, so this is something you're gonna see in this presentation as well. And then pin code. So a pin code is just a four to five digit number needed to code new keys on a VW or Audi immobilizer system. And lastly, transponder key. So a transponder key is just a microchip or RF transmitter built into the plastic head of the key. It transmits a low level signal from a key that is read by a remote receiver. Okay, so there's a lot more terminology, but these are just the basics, guys. So make sure you keep note of this. Now I'm going to introduce you to the immobilizer generations. Okay, so as you can see, there's five of them. And I'm just going to give you plus minus what the years these are applicable to. So immobilizer one would probably start off from 2004. Around 2004, it requires a four digit pin but you cannot get the pin via OBD. You probably have to do this via bench, bench mode, okay, with the serial program. Um, it does not require a dealer key, and the transponder type is an ID48, okay? Um, the next is Immobilizer 2. Now, Immobilizer 2 is probably between the years 2000, 2005. Um, it does require a four-digit pin, and it is also does not need a pre-coded key and they use the ID48T6 chip. Immobilizer 3, um, this is probably between, I would say, 2004 to 2009. Um, it requires a five digit pin code and it also requires pre-coded keys. However, there are some uh, scenarios where it does not require it, okay? Only VW will know. Like Immobilizer 3 and Immobilizer 4, there's a lot of integration in between them. It's really hard to just say, okay, between this year and this year, you're going to get this type of Immobilizer. Um, Emo 4, that one would probably go between 2005 to 2019. It requires a five digit pin and it also requires a pre coded key. And uh, let's see, the MQB systems, this is probably between 2013 and up. Uh, it requires a five digit pin. It also requires a pre coded key. And Emo 5, this is probably 2009 to 2019, um, also requires a five digit pin, and uh, pre coded keys are required. Okay, so. One thing that I've learned is by understanding each generation's immobilizer system, it will help you understand how to approach that particular uh, key coding event. Okay, because some emo systems you can't do through OBD, some you can, some you gotta take like a, a body control module off. So knowing this is would help you in your uh, key coding journey. So emo one, uses the emo box immobilizer system emo 2 uses the instrument k line system emo 3 uses the instrument can emo 4 uses the instrument can the kessie system which is also like a key let's go the mqb system the ezs system and then the comfort module and the comfort module you also will see that in the immobilizer Regeneration, and then lastly, Emo 5, which is the BCM 2. Okay, so now that we have all that theory, all right, ain't nothing to it but to do it. Let's go and uh, apply what we learn. So, first, we're gonna get the ignition key, the original ignition key. We're gonna put it into the key slot, and then we're gonna turn it into position one. Okay, do not turn on the engine. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and enter in the vehicle information. All right, and then we should get to smart mode. All right, then it's gonna read vehicle information. So this is just a summary 
of uh, what the Autel identified the vehicle to be. We're going to click yes. All right, analyzing vehicle immobilizer type. All right, so this information is just a summary of some of the terms that you're going to be seeing in the, in the next menu. So it talks about key learning, uh, the add key function. It also explains what will happen if you can't get the car out of service mode, what to do. So after you read that, go ahead and we're going to click OK. All right, so this is the check key status menu. So it's just giving us a summary of what the key is. There's two keys present. Is the inserted key a pre-coded key? Yes. Is it locked? Yes. And usually the, the keys from the, the manufacturer will be locked, but you can still relearn them. And then is it a learn key? Yes. So let's go ahead and click escape. All right, so this is your menu. And since we're just going to add a key, all right, we're gonna select that. Remember, key learning will erase all the keys and then learn it back into the system via the ignition switch. We're just gonna go add key. So let's go ahead and add key, or key add. Okay, so this is just another prompt. It's not applicable to us. I'm click okay. All right, so. This is the process that it's going to be uh, doing in order to learn the key. It's a three-step. So just to explain what's happening, um, it's connecting to the vehicle. It's going to put it into service mode because it's trying to get the CS data, which is component security. So once it gets that information, it's going to, let's say, put it into the serial programmer right and then once that information has been extracted then we can make the dealer key it's going to tell us to put in the uh, key into the serial programmer so we can put that CS data I guess onto the chip which is going to do that right now so we're going to make a dealer key we're going to pre do the, 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 the key coding click yes all right so there we go, we're going to pop that in there, click OK, connect it to programmer, and we're going to let that information get right on that chip. Alright, so let's let it do its thing. And then um, at this point, if you have any other additional keys that you would like to add on to the system, this would be a good time to do it. But in our case, since we don't, we're going to click no. All right, so the final step is uh, now that the data has been onto the chip, it's gonna learn it back to the vehicle, okay? So it's gonna connect to the programmer and then it's gonna go back into service mode. You can see the dash power off because it's, it's part of the learning process it has to do. And then, uh, that's pretty much it. There's going to be a couple of prompts in the programmer. We'll let that do that. So while it's doing that, you guys, I want to get your, your guys' feedback. All the key jobs you're doing, okay, what is the most difficult? Which ones do you tend to avoid and tell me why? Um, I'm just trying to see, you know, which ones that you guys like doing, which ones you guys hate doing. So feel free to share in the comments below. All right, cool. So we're going to click OK. All right, we're at 80%. And uh, we're going to let this thing go through. 91%, almost there. Complete. All right, so I'm going to click OK. All right, so now it takes us back to our key status. So before it was two, and now it's three. And you can see everything is, is yes. The, the dealer key is it locked is it learned yes all right so I'm going to exit out okay and I will tell you some instances when you do a key coding procedure the remote settings might be lost sometimes they don't they will be fine if it does you need to go to the remote control learning and relearn the remote remote again all right, so let's continue to go out. 
And then from this point, we can test our keys and see if everything's working. So that wasn't too difficult, guys. All right. So before we end, just a few things I want you to remember. So number one, it's good practice to use a direct connection when doing the key coding. All right. As I said before, on certain cases, the Bluetooth frequency may interrupt the operation. All right. Next tip, a dealer key is a key that just needs to be pre-configured before it can be learned to the vehicle. All right. It doesn't mean it needs to be ordered from the dealer. Okay. Third, if you accidentally erase the original key, you just have to learn the key again by selecting the key learning option. And remember, since the key is already pre-configured, the ones from the dealer are already pre-configured. When the sequence asks you, do you want to make a dealer key? If it's the original key, you click no, because it's already pre-configured, okay? No need to make a dealer key. And then fourth, certain cases the remote will, act, will automatically be configured, but in most cases, you probably need to reconfigure the remote separately from the immobilizer. And then lastly, a lot of people ask me this, you can use, you can use aftermarket keys, but you may run into quality issues with the key. So some people, they'll get their keys from you know online, Amazon, or eBay. They're cheaper, but sometimes the build quality on them isn't you know 100%. So you'd be trying to relearn a key, and you don't know if it's the vehicle, you don't know if it's you know a, a software issue, you don't know if it's if it's the key. So if you just want a bit more certainty, just get it from a reliable source. All right. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you want to get your hands on one of these tools and want me to help you learn some of these skills, uh, go to my website, alltelltech.co.za, and book a consult, and I'll be more than happy to assist you. Um, but with that, I really, really am thankful for all your guys' support. We're about at 13,000 subscribers. And uh, yeah, with your support, I can keep on making these videos. So um, keep it up and I'll see you in the next presentation. Take care. Bye.